the distance now, it seems far, far away, but when we were younger, this little distance didn't seem as, as far. <laughs> At 90 years old, Willie Reed and Nat Bates move a lot slower these days, but they clearly remember their glory days on the baseball field. I enjoyed turning the double play. They've been friends since middle school and have lived in Richmond, California for most of their lives. Uh, ooh. But still reminisce about a time seven decades ago when they moved north to play baseball on an all-black team. It was July 1st, 1952. The town of Indian Head, Saskatchewan was celebrating its 50th anniversary. The main event was dubbed Canada's Greatest Baseball Tournament. It attracted thousands of fans. And on the mound for the Indian Head Rockets was a young black man from California, Nat Bates. Behind him at second base was one of his best friends, Willie Reed. That seemed like a time of great opportunity for them. We were young and, and uh, eager to uh, explore and go up there and play baseball because we had an uh, inkling of uh, being in the majors later on in life and so forth. So we figured that would be a good experience. The Canadians were extremely polite friendly, supportive. We had a pretty good baseball team and uh, we generally filled the stands wherever we uh, played. Jackie Robinson singles the center. Up until the 1940s, baseball had been racially segregated. Then in 1947, Jackie Robinson became the first African American to play in the majors. There was no longer a need for the all-black Negro National League and it quickly folded leaving hundreds of black professional ball players without a place to play. Most ended up on barnstorming teams touring across America. Nat and Willie made their way up to Saskatchewan after the Jacksonville Eagles moved to Canada and became the Indian Head Rockets. It's a new adventure. I don't think the players, my co-players were, you know, fearful. Coming from the United States uh, where Right after the war, we had experienced a lot of racism uh, in housing and just in a personal relationships. But in Canada, the only thing that you might call racial, but it wasn't, is that they referred African Americans as darkies. Good morning, darky. You know, that kind of thing. There were black players on teams all across the prairies. But while these American and Cuban players who visited Canada in the 1940s and 50s were celebrated, black Canadian players still faced barriers. Professor Ornella Inzi and Duki Yimana studies the experience of black athletes in Canada. We do have sort of that, that dissonance where black Canadians who are from here, who are living here, um, very much recognize that, that, that um, it's a complex place to, to live. You never know where you stand. This summer, the town of Indian Head is taking its own trip down memory lane. The local museum opened up an exhibit honoring the Rockets and what they meant to the community during the 1950s. Leon Farrell's father ran the team. Pretty exciting. You know, I remember going to the games and cheering like mad. Max Weeder is a baseball historian originally from Saskatchewan. He says these all-black teams in prairie towns brought together people from different worlds at a time when racial integration was gaining momentum. That role uh, it, it played uh, in exposing people in Indian Head, people across the prairies to people of different cultures. Uh, and I think that was certainly important. Um, and it's important, I think, that we remember so much more history than we do. The induction to the Saskatchewan Baseball Hall of Fame means a lot to Nat and Willie. We want to thank the Canadians for letting us be part of their history. It's a tremendous honor. For these two longtime friends and for the town they represented, their old team still holds a special place in their hearts. Dan Plaster, CBC News, Indian Head, Saskatchewan.